Hello, and welcome to the fifth video in our series, Vibration Analysis for Beginners. As we've learned from the previous videos, the signal from a vibration sensor is in analog form. In order to work with it in analyzers, the signal must be converted to digital form. This conversion is done by an AD converter. The digitalized data only describes the input signal. It is not identical to the input signal. When the digitized signal is reconstructed back to the analog form, the reconstructed signal is not exactly the same, only similar. AD converters convert analog, or continuous, signals into digital, or discrete, signals. The conversion of an analog signal into a discrete digital signal involves two phases. Sampling is performed by dividing the horizontal axis of the signal, the time axis, into uniform segments and taking a sample from each segment. This results in a set of discrete points with intervals corresponding to the sampling frequency used. If the original continuous signal contains frequencies higher than half the sampling frequency, the signal will be distorted by the phenomenon known as aliasing. You can see the same digital signal, but converted from different analog signals. To prevent aliasing, a low-pass filter is used to ensure that frequencies higher than half the sampling frequency do not enter the converter. Of course, these high frequencies are missing in the digitalized signal, but we have prevented the creation of new, unrealistic frequencies. A common example of aliasing is a film capture of a fast rotating object. For example, an aircraft propeller will appear to rotate unnaturally slowly or in the opposite direction due to the low sampling frequency. With our current knowledge, we can calculate the measurement duration given f max, the frequency we still want to capture, and the number of samples for the measurement. f max equals 100 Hz. Samples equals 2048. As a protection against aliasing, a sampling frequency 2.56 times higher than the highest captured frequency is used as a standard. The choice of 2.56 multiples is based on the operating principle of the fast Fourier transform. It is the fact that two times the sampling rate itself provides anti-aliasing protection. For example, to detect 100 Hz with 2048 samples, 100 Hz times 2.56 equals 256 Hz is the required sampling frequency. 1 divided by 256 represents the time between samples in seconds. And with 2048 samples, 1 divided by 256 times 2048 equals 8 seconds which is the measurement duration. Because computers and other devices that process digital signals can only express numbers with limited precision, the sampled values must be adjusted on the vertical axis. This is an example of integer quantization. The space around is divided into tolerance bands. Each sample, the black dots, that falls into the given tolerance band is assigned the given value the green dots, during quantization. Now we have a digital signal in the analyzer and we can work with it. For example, we can display it in its time domain form, the time wave form. However, a more informative representation is the frequency domain. As shown in the previous video, the spectrum reveals the frequencies that compose the vibration signal. To calculate the spectrum, we use the fast Fourier transform, the FFT. It's not easy to explain, but for our purposes, it's not necessary. Imagine a piano with keys. When the pianist activates the hammers by pressing the piano keys, the hammers hit the strings. Each string is tuned to a specific tone, which corresponds to a frequency. When a pianist plays a combination of keys at the same time, a complex harmony is created, made up of the sounds and loudness of the individual strings. The Fourier transform is a mathematical tool that can decompose this harmony back into individual string tones and loudness. 
Any complex signal, such as human speech, music, or the output of a vibration sensor, can be described as a sum of different frequencies thanks to Fourier transformation. This produces a spectrum of the signal, which is analogous to musical notation that tells you which keys on a piano to press and with what force to reproduce the original sound. However, the FFT has one limitation. All signal components must be periodic. If a non-periodic component is present, the FFT will incorrectly calculate its spectrum. We observe that when the signal is non-periodic, energy escapes or leaks into several spectral lines close to the actual frequency, causing the spectrum to spread over several lines. This phenomenon is called leakage. To mitigate this, a trick is used. The signal is artificially stitched together using windows, making it periodic. Windows also have another function. They dampen the signal at the beginning and end to ensure a clean periodic signal when stitched together. Different window types, such as rectangular, Hanning and flat top, have different characteristics, and in a vibration analyzer you can select a window type to suit your needs best. Vibration analysis can be broadly divided into two categories, machine mechanical fault analysis and bearing analysis. Basic machine mechanical faults include imbalance, misalignment and mechanical looseness. We can detect these faults at low frequencies, 10 to 1000 Hz. Vibration measurements are measured in velocity, millimeters per second. If the velocity values are high, examination of the spectrum can be helpful. If the spectrum shows a single high line at the speed frequency, the fault is unbalanced. For example, if there is only one high line at 25 Hz, calculating 25 times 60 gives 1500 RPM. If the speed is indeed 1500 RPM, the fault is unbalanced. Unbalance can be mechanical, requiring balancing, or electrical, in the case of motors. To differentiate, observe the velocity value when the motor is switched off. If the velocity value decreases as the speed decreases, the fault is mechanical unbalance. A rapid drop to almost zero power cut, indicates an electrical fault. If the speed line and its multiples the harmonics, are present in the spectrum, the fault is looseness or misalignment. Axial velocity values significantly lower than the radial values, e.g. less than 30% of the radial value, suggest looseness. In this case, readings should be taken on all machine feet. This can be done without pads because velocity measurements at low frequencies are less sensitive than high frequency acceleration measurements. Locate the foot with the highest value. It likely points to the looseness failure. This is often due to a broken anchor bolt. If the axial velocity value is similar to or higher than the radial value, the fault is misalignment, which requires alignment. A unique type of fault is resonance, which is mimicked as an unbalance with a single speed line in the spectrum. Balancing will have minimal effect, as the real problem is the natural frequency of the machine foundation near the speed frequency. To identify this, Measure the velocity at the foundation. If the values are low at the ends and high in the middle, resonance is the problem. Strengthening of the foundation is usually required. This will change the natural frequency. The other aspect of vibration analysis is bearing analysis. Bearing faults occur in the high frequency range, 500 Hz to 16 kHz, and are represented by the bearing vibrations a tone caused by ball impacts. Acceleration, g, is used to measure vibration. An increase in vibrations in the high frequency spectrum indicates a worsening bearing condition. Bearing analysis focuses on the fault frequencies that are specific to bearings. What is a bearing fault frequency? Imagine a pitting on the outer race. Each ball hitting the pitting causes a vibration shock, the tone. If there is a crack on the outer race, we calculate the time interval, t, between shocks based on the speed frequency and ball count. 
This time interval defines the repeating frequency of the shocks, the fault frequency. In this example, it's the fault frequency of the outer race. But bearing fault frequencies don't appear in the bearing spectrum. Only the vibration frequency from the ball impact, bearing tone, is evident. Such a ball impact can be seen in the time domain. To identify fault frequencies, signal demodulation is used. This involves removing frequencies below 500 Hz, the high-pass filter, and artificially adding energy to the signal using envelope detection. The signal is then processed using FFT to create the spectrum. Due to the artificial distortion, the spectrum contains many harmonic frequencies that we ignore. Our fault frequency in this case is 10 Hz.